Look, I'm even wearing my strawberry shirt. One of my favorite things about summer is strawberry recipes, and you are gonna love the strawberry cheesecake. Plus, it's easier to make than you think, and I'm craving cheesecake, so let's get started. We'll start with our favorite graham cracker crust. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, then in a blender or food processor, crush up your graham crackers. You can also buy pre-crushed crumbs, but this is so easy and much less expensive. I like to crush my own crackers. Also, this is a new blender that we are really loving. I will link to it in the notes. You'll need about 15 to 16 whole graham crackers to make about two cups of crumbs. Add some sugar to your crumbs and stir that together to combine. Next, add some melted unsalted butter. Stir the butter into the crumbs until they're evenly moistened. The butter is the glue that holds the crust together, so you want to make sure it's well mixed. You'll need a 9-inch springform pan with about 3-inch tall walls. I will link to my favorite pan in the notes. Here's a tip that I learned recently. If you line the bottom of your pan with parchment paper, it'll be much easier to remove your cheesecake later. Pour the crust into your prepared pan and start spreading them out. Press the crumbs into the bottom of the pan and go about three-fourths of the way up the sides of the pan. I love using my measuring cup with straight sides to help me make an even crust. Now transfer that to the center of a preheated oven and bake for eight minutes. Once that's done, take it out of the oven and let it cool to room temperature. You'll also want to increase the oven temperature to 450 degrees Fahrenheit for baking the cheesecake. In the bowl of your stand mixer, fitted with the paddle attachment, we're going to combine cream cheese and sugar. It's super important to make sure your cream cheese is at room temperature, otherwise your cheesecake will end up lumpy. I love to use my paddle attachment, which is also called a flat beater, to beat cheesecake because it whips it nicely without incorporating too much air into the batter. Beat on medium-high speed for five minutes or until it's completely smooth. You'll need to scrape down the bowl a couple of times. My stand mixer is definitely the workhorse of my kitchen. I have used this one for years and love it, and it's still going strong. I will link to it in the recipe notes. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can absolutely use an electric hand mixer with egg beater attachments. This first mixing step is your opportunity to ensure your cheesecake is completely smooth. That's why I like to scrape the sides of the bowl, making sure there aren't any pieces of cheesecake globbed onto the bowl. Once that's whipped and completely smooth, reduce the speed to medium and add your eggs one at a time, allowing them to incorporate into the batter before you add the next one. You'll want to scrape down the bowl again to make sure the batter is evenly mixing. Finally, reduce the mixer to low speed and add your sour cream and vanilla extract. And of course, we're using our homemade two-ingredient vanilla extract. I will link to this as well. It is my favorite for all of my baking projects and I can keep refilling the bottle and it lasts and lasts. Once it's done mixing, we're gonna scrape it down one more time to make sure everything is really well incorporated. Now transfer the batter to your pre-baked crust, and it's okay if the cheesecake crust is still warm, you just want to make sure it's not hot. Make sure you get every last drop out of that bowl, and smooth out the top. I love how the crust comes up to the level of the cheesecake, it's just so beautiful once it's baked. We are going to bake this in a water bath because that's the best way to prevent cracks in a cheesecake. You'll need to boil a large kettle or pot of water. You'll need two large sheets of heavy-duty foil. These will ensure you don't get any water in your cheesecake. Gently fold the foil up over the sides of the cheesecake pan. You'll want to fan the edges out slightly to allow the cheesecake to rise and also to keep any splatter of water from coming up over your cheesecake. Be careful when folding to make sure you don't rip or tear the foil. Transfer that to a large roasting pan. It should be just large enough to accommodate your cheesecake. Now add your boiling hot water into the roasting pan about halfway up the sides of the springform pan. Make sure your roasting pan is sturdy enough to transfer with hot water, otherwise you can pour the water in when it's on the oven rack. Very carefully transfer that to the preheated oven and bake at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. 
Now without opening the oven, turn the heat down to 225 degrees Fahrenheit and continue baking for about 60 to 75 minutes. Now we can get started on our homemade strawberry topping. This is a super simple sauce and needs just three ingredients. Remove the tops and thinly slice one pound of fresh strawberries. Transfer those to a medium saucepan. Add sugar and some freshly squeezed lemon juice. You can add more sugar to taste if your strawberries are very tart and you like a sweeter sauce. Set that over medium heat and stir until the sugar is dissolved and the strawberries start to release juice. Once the strawberries are at a boil, reduce the heat down to a simmer and let it continue cooking for another 20 to 23 minutes, stirring occasionally. The strawberries will naturally release pectin, producing a thick and syrupy strawberry topping. Set the sauce aside and let it cool to room temperature, then you can refrigerate until it's ready to serve. All right, our cheesecake has been in the oven for about 75 minutes, and to check for doneness, I like to give the pan a jolt. If you see a very slight wiggle in the center, the cheesecake is ready. It's important to cool a cheesecake slowly, so once it's out of the oven, let it sit in that hot water bath for 45 minutes, then transfer to a wire rack to cool completely to room temperature. Once that's cooled down, you can cover with plastic wrap and refrigerate overnight. Chilling the cheesecake overnight allows it to set properly. If you cut into a cheesecake that's not cooled, it can slide apart. I do love that the cheesecake and the topping are both make-ahead friendly. I did make another cheesecake yesterday that is fully chilled and ready to serve. Remove it from the springform pan and it should slide out easily, then transfer to a cake platter. And because I've lined the bottom with parchment paper, it should slide right off. To make this a strawberry cheesecake, we're gonna start by decorating the top with fresh strawberries. This decoration is super simple. Cut your strawberries into halves or quarters depending on how large your strawberries are. Now arrange them over half of your cheesecake. If you have small strawberries, you can also sneak some whole ones in there. Oh, it is so beautiful and so simple to decorate a strawberry cheesecake. And I love it this way without pouring on all the sauce because not all the kids love strawberry sauce and that's okay because you can still slice them a cake without strawberries on it. So this is how I love to serve my strawberry cheesecake. And of course, with a side of a strawberry sauce drizzled all over the piece. Oh, it's so good. Also, here's a great tip. And I showed you this in our classic cheesecake recipe, but cheesecakes can get really messy when you start slicing them up. So here's what I do. You'll need a sharp lawn knife. It has to go at least to the center to get a clean cut and if you fill a little mason jar with hot water and then dip your knife, starting with a hot knife helps to slide through that cheesecake easily. And also wipe your knife in between slices. That'll give you clean cuts and it won't look like a big disaster. <laughs> Cause you worked on this cheesecake. You want it to stay beautiful even when it's served. And let me show you the amazing texture of this cheesecake. I'm ready to slice into this thing. Here we go. That is so creamy, so smooth. Wipe the knife between slices. All right, now I want you to get a good look of the inside. The texture of this cheesecake is phenomenal. I mean, it is airy and so smooth, super creamy. Oh, it is just amazing. I love that it's not dense. It goes down easy, real easy. <laughs> it's never a struggle. <laughs> and wait until you try that irresistible strawberry sauce. It's just three ingredients and so, so delicious. All right, we're gonna get a big old scoop of strawberry sauce. I love how it kind of drips down the edges. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna add just a little more because why not? <laughs> And just to add a little bit of glam, I like to put a little half of a strawberry on top for presentation. Okay, now I'm just gonna dig right in because oh, 
<laughs> I want it so bad. I know how good this cheesecake is. Look at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's not a drip, that's like a cascade. <laughs> okay, I am just gonna dig right into this. Make sure to get a lot of strawberry on my fork. Nice big bite. I love how generous the crust is on this. Here's the moment I've been waiting for. <laughs> it's so smooth. I love that it's not too sweet. And that strawberry topping really cuts the sweetness of the cheesecake, adds that little sweet tang and pop of flavor. And it's so fresh for summer. If you don't have fresh strawberries or you have winter strawberries, you can definitely use frozen for this sauce. I know I have to get my kids in for a taste test. All right, the taste testers. <laughs> she looks a little too excited. <laughs> These two have been waiting very impatiently as well. How big of a slice do you want? Is that good? Yeah. Okay. All right, here's one. And for the little one, is this good? Bigger? Okay. Huge! That's humongous! Are you kidding me? You're never gonna eat that. Yeah, yeah. How did your brother get a much smaller slice? All right, and do you want strawberry sauce on yours? You wanted strawberry sauce on yours? Okay. Can you handle this? All right, did you want strawberry sauce? No. Just a strawberry then for you. Here you go, it still has to be a strawberry cheesecake. <laughs> taste test, taste test. I want your reviews. Isn't that good, cheesecake with strawberry? This is cheesecake, but this is really good. Yeah? It's good. It's good. Told you, cheesecake and strawberries. Should they try the cheesecake? It's a yes. <laughs> yeah. Let me know where you guys found Sharky in the video. And if you're looking for more fresh strawberry recipes, make sure you check out that right over there. And we'll see you in the next episode of Natasha's Kitchen. Bye. Let's do the royal wave. <laughs> so we all got it down. <laughs> Cut.